Hi everyone. Um, here's a video on how I do my setup currently uh, using Timing Solution um, to do a projection for the following week of price action on the Euro USD. So um, I get my data to put into a Timing Solution from the MT4 platform, and here's my Oanda. MT4. Um, <clears throat> I particularly like Oanda because I'm in the New York uh, City area, and <clears throat> they provide data using Eastern Standard Time, uh, which I find to be very convenient. Um, so uh, the first step is to export this data and then open it in Timing Solution. So we go up to Tools, History Center, and choose Euro USD 30 minutes and then export and then it'll put it into timing solution um, folder which is um, at the root of uh, disk C and the subfolder is time set and um, click save yes to replace what I have and then close <clears throat> Next, um, come over here to Timing Solution, and we just let that run. And now, to load the data, I go, probably I usually use this open uh, folder here, Download Historical Price Data. Uh, Sergey has changed the look of this to accommodate uh, every possible um, data set that you could possibly want to use. Um, so, uh, come down here to my Euro USD 30 minute. Um, it's CSV data, which you can open also in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, next, click Load and OK. And yes, over here, um, it's seeing that it's um, intraday data. And then finally, OK. <clears throat> So um, I've been standardizing to 10,000 bars of data, um, and I've set that up in MetaTrader also. And we do that under, let's see, uh, options here, and charts, and max bars in history, max bars in charts. I put uh, 10,000, so I can say OK to that. So it, it loaded a few more, 10,033, but that's OK. Uh, next, we hit Calculate. And 10,000 bars takes us back about 10 months of data, 30-minute uh, data. All right, so right-click to zoom in, click and drag, right-click and drag. And um, so here is the uh, data through. Uh, Friday evening yesterday, um, June 8th, and so um, <clears throat> I do like the astronomy module very much um, for calculating uh, movement, and um, we like, as Sergey has said, uh, with an ocean of possibilities, where do you begin here? Um, you know, certainly the annual cycle, which is the movement of the sun, I'm sorry, movement of the earth around the sun, um, first harmonic. Um, uh, with this amount of data, we only have 0.81 cycles because we are, have 10 months of data rather than the full 12 here. Um, so that's when I get into using harmonics. Um, and typically, um, I try to get these cycles to round to a, a 3, 6, 9, or 11 um, period. In other words, um, if we add 4 and 2 is 6, and 2 is 8, this is an 8. Um, and let me just make the line a little thicker. So I click this uh, icon next to the color and make thickness 2. And this button on the right here brings that up into the chart. Um, okay, so let's see what happens if I go to 2, and notice how it shifts over to the right, and here we have 8 again. Um, 
if I go to fourth harmonic, it's eight again. So, uh, but this looks very good, doesn't it? If I move this out of the way for a second, um, the uh, slope of this sine wave follows price action perfectly. Um, if I right click and put the learning LBC or the learning border cursor to before the price data, then uh, for the week, uh, this data is invisible to the program. So uh, had I just chosen Sun uh, Geo, fourth harmonic, um, this is the curve that it would have generated, and this is what we would have used to uh, trade from. And it would have been profitable, you know, is just as much as uh, the best that I did last week. So um, and this is showing what it's going to do for the following week. Okay, that said, so I'm going to, um, on the right here, uncheck that and hide this for a second. Um, because of the infinite, well, not infinite, but high number of possibilities, where do you begin? So I've started to standardize by first running a spectrum module. And what it does is it analyzes all the cyclical, uh, most important cycles, um, given the 10,000 bar data series. And the cycles with the highest peaks um, are the ones that are most active, like the 300 bar almost, and a 337. Um, but I'm trying to find the overall contour for the week. In other words, go long until we get to um, Thursday morning, New York time, and then go short. And um, these shorter cycles down through here uh, introduce a lot of noise. Um, it may show us every tiny little blip so of movement. So what I've done is I've concentrated on these cycles roughly from 800 and above. Uh, so the, if I put my cursor here at the trough of this particular cycle, I see it's 841 uh, bars. And coming over here, I'm going to stop it at about 2,000. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do with the Q spectrum now. So I'm, uh, bear with me. So now I'm going to click Q in the upper right here and enter 840 minimum and 2,000 maximum cycles for that I want the Q to examine. Click Calculate. While it's doing that, let me pause the video. OK, that took about three minutes or so to calculate. Um, now the green peaks right here. Uh, this sine wave corresponds to the spectrum. Uh, whoops, I clicked the wrong button. I'm recalculating the spectrum here, but that's okay. Um, it, uh, calculating the spectrum is pretty quick. I should have just um, brought it back up from the uh, minimized position. But anyhow, um, okay, so these cycle waves here um, this one, this one, and these two little ones correspond to these here. So these two little ones, and this one, and this one. And what I try to do is then click on the congruence of the Q spectrum with the regular spectrum. So for instance, there's a peak here, and I click here. Um, this one it doesn't quite line up, but I'll click it anyway. And there's an alignment here. Click that one. Not so much on this one, although I could split the difference and say, okay, if this is the center, what if I click here and click here? And then um, that seems to work out too because these will average out. And then minimize this window and notice the curve that it generated. And this is just like the curve that I posted in the forum last week. Um, so, let me just hide this data. Okay, so uh, when I when I create a new projection line for the upcoming week, uh, this is what I'm seeing. I have data for the previous week and no data for the upcoming week. Um, in the program, when the LBC is set here, uh, this data was invisible to the program. 
uh, and this was the line that I saw. So then what I did was I, I pulled up my astrolog chart and just take a peek to see what's happening. Um, let's go backwards here to Monday, uh, June 4th. Um, and then I, I like using Astrolog. We could do it inside of Timing Solution, but I'm just used to uh, uh, a creature of habit, and I've been doing this for a long time uh, before I had Timing Solution. So I like scrolling using the plus button and the minus button. Um, so there's Monday through Friday. And notice that I referred to this trine between Jupiter and Neptune last week, uh, and here it shows up. Uh, and um, something that I watch out for too is whether the moon is crossing uh, during the week um, has less effect on the outer, mo outermost planets. <clears throat> so Saturn is pretty much in the open. That's a vertex crossing there, which is inconsequential. Pluto has got a opposition with Venus, and oppositions and uh, conjunctions and squares, as you know, are detrimental, and trines are, are positive. So I'm going to go with this one. Okay, so bring up astronomy, uh, composite again, and I choose Jupiter minus Neptune, and I've been using phase as my favorite go-to, um, and notice the other thing, this is grayed out here because um, Sergei rec recommends at least three cycles um, to be accurate, and this is 1.67, um, but I found that anywhere from two and a half up worked pretty well for me. Um, let me just bring up that curve. <clears throat> okay, so next I basically I'm starting to look through these harmonics to see how I can match um, match the Q spectrum curve, and this is pretty much what I did last week. Notice that um, this is going in the opposite direction to this curve. So then I click inverted here, and notice that um, that's a better fit. Um, let's try the 8, 10, 7. I'm looking at this addition of the cycles here. Also, I wanted to point out um, right here um, with the LBC back setback like this, we're getting, um, of these cycles that I'm choosing, uh, what is the correlation? So inverted is correlating at almost 39%, but um, the normal not inverted curve is a minus. And that's a tip that um, that's the wrong thing to choose, okay? It's minus almost 40%. <clears throat> Try a couple more of these. And usually I don't go any higher than 10 or so. Alrighty. Um, pause for a second. Um, so one other thing I wanted to point out is that um, Saturn is in Capricorn, and Saturn is exalted in Capricorn, and um, uh, this is a very powerful combination. Um, Saturn is also in retrograde right now, but um, the Moon is well beyond Saturn, and there's uh, nothing interacting with Saturn uh, for the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so, um, let's see, on Friday, yeah, just a moon uh, conjunct, I mean a square, sorry. Uh, so, knowing that, 
I brought up um, one more composite and just put Saturn minus Saturn and started with phase again and looked at my harmonics until I found a combination that uh, is my 369 um, resonance and so 3 and 6 is 9 um, so just taking a peek at that uh, let's bring up that uh, here we go and drop this one away and notice how wonderful uh, starting uh, early Monday morning how that again matches price action almost perfectly here <clears throat> um, so uh, just to recap um, this video is going on a little long um, in an infinite world of possibilities how do we choose a astro composite so in order to do that I first do a cyclical analysis uh, looking for synergy between the spectrum module and the Q-spectrum module. I rely on the longer cycle so I can try to pick out the major change in trend for the week and not be bothered by the noise of these individual movements. Um, I put that up and then uh, start uh, bring up my astrolog. Um, you certainly could do it within um, the program itself. Um, and when you click on specific um, points in a chart it'll it'll move the chart for you uh, so you certainly could do it that way um, and I'm looking for um, outer planets usually that are not encumbered through conjunctions squares and oppositions um, and in the case of trines I may uh, do that planet minus the other one uh, finally, as I look, whoops, sorry about that, get rid of that. Um, in the phase studies, um, what harmonic to use, I try to get a resonance of 3, 6, 9, or 11 here. And in terms of inverted, notice that this Saturn is inverted too. I try to get it to match somewhat the cyclical analysis here. And that's pretty much it. So good luck, and let me know if you have any questions. Take care.